Good morning everybody, it's 10 a.m. and it's time for GSC at Home, your daily slice of science from the lovely people at Glasgow Science Centre. And today we're going to talk a little bit about bees because spring has sprung, flowers are starting to grow and the bees are going to be out in force doing all the hard work that bees do. But before we talk about the bees, let's have a little think about some of the things that bees do. Now I'm sure you've all thought of some lovely answers. I know one thing that bees like to do, they love to make that buzzing noise bzz, bzz, as they fly around. Another thing that they like to do is they like to sting. Well, they don't actually like to sting. What they do is they sting to keep themselves safe. So if you see a bee, try not to bother it because it doesn't want to sting you, but if you start bothering it, then it might have to sting you. Another thing that bees do is they create lovely and delicious honey by flying around from flower to flower, collecting some nectar that they use for food for themselves, but also to make honey as well. But there's one other thing that happens when they're flying from flower to flower, and that's a process that we call pollination. And that starts with something that we call pollen. Have you heard of pollen before? Now, pollen isn't just that thing that makes you sneezy in the springtime. No, pollen's got a way more important job, and it's part of the job that we call pollination. We're going to have a little think about that right now. So when a bee is looking around for nectar, it's looking for flowers. And it's looking for flowers that either have the prettiest smells or the prettiest petals. Because those are the flowers that the bee knows will have the best nectar. And when a bee lands on a flower, it will start to lick up some of the delicious nectar that it's looking for. But when it's doing that, the flower is actually giving off some pollen. And that pollen gets stuck all over the bee. And when the bee's had enough nectar from the flower, it will fly off to look for some more nectar from another flower. When it flies to another flower, the pollen will fall off it, and it will begin the process that starts to make new seeds. If we look closer at it in this picture, when the bee's on the petal, it's near the stamen. This is the part of the flower that gives off the pollen. The pollen gets stuck to the bee, and when the bee flies to the next flower, it touches this part here, the stigma, which is all sticky, and it captures the pollen on the bee, and that's what starts the seed creating or reproductive process. Now what do seeds become? That's right, seeds grow up to be more plants and flowers. And plants and flowers are very, very important for us on planet Earth because not only do they make the place look nice and pretty, but plants also give off this gas that we call oxygen. That's a gas that we use to breathe and stay alive. So it's very, very important. And the bees do a very, very important job for all of us on planet Earth. And we should do our part to help the bees out as well because bees, their population is in a bit of decline. And what we could be doing to help them out, as well as being nice to them when you see them out in the wild, is also planting some flowers that just help them out too. And there's plenty of flowers that are packed full of nectar and pollen that bees will absolutely love. Those are plants like lavender, honeysuckle, persimmons. That's just a few that we can think of that would really, really help the bees out. So if you're ever out in the garden and you want to plant some flowers, I think about some of the ones that I just mentioned. Now today, we're not going to make flowers that are going to go in the garden, but we are going to make pretty little flowers to sort of say thank you to the bees that really, really help us out on planet Earth. And we're going to have a few things that we need to make these flowers. We've got a few craft things that I found lying around the house. You'll see a video showing them off right now, but we're going to go over each part of them and we're going to see exactly what part of the plant these represent and what they're actually useful for. So first of all, we're going to start with the straw. You could have a stick or you could make something else like this out of paper if you like. And this is going to be the stem of our flower. Now the stem is a very, very important part because the stem holds the flower up to stand nice and tall. But not only that, it also has roots on the bottom in the ground which keep our flower in place. But as well as keeping our flower in place, it also drinks up nutrients and water that are in the soil that they're going to use for food a little bit later. They're going to use some other parts that we're going to cover as well. So we've got a straw or a stick or something for our stem. So now we have to make these. 
the leaves and leaves are very very important for our flowers and plants because as well as looking nice and lovely and green they perform a very important job they're going to help our flower absorb sunlight and absorbing sunlight is very very important to our flower in fact it's as important as eating for you and me because what the flower does is it combines sunlight as well as the nutrients and the water that it gets from its roots with some carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to create food for itself and this is a process that we call photosynthesis. And photosynthesis not only is very good for the plant, but it's also very good for us living on planet Earth as well. Because as the plant absorbs carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, taking away a pretty harmful gas to the environment, it's also giving out a gas for us that we need. It's also giving out oxygen. So, the next time you see a plant outside, make sure that it's getting plenty of sunlight because it's definitely helping us breathe and stay alive on planet Earth. Another thing that we're going to need is we're going to need some petals. For this, you could use some coloured card or you could use some white paper as well. If you're using white paper, cut out your petal shapes and make them as colourful and exotic as you like. Today though, I think I'm going to make a simple daisy. Earlier on, I actually made a daffodil as well. So the cake casing was for the little cup bit, the little comb bit of our daffodil, also with a yellow card. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to flatten this cupcake out and I'm going to make a daisy. So this of course is your time to be creative and have a lot of fun. Make whatever you like. Make the prettiest flower with the prettiest petals because bees love flowers with pretty petals because when bees see pretty petals they think delicious nectar. So please make the loveliest, most colourful flowers that you can and share them with us. Now let's get crafting. And there we go, we have our flowers all made and don't they look very, very nice? Hopefully you've made some really nice flowers yourself at home. If you have made some really nice flowers and you want to share them, get in touch with us on social media. We do love to see everything that you do at home along with us here at GSC at home. And most importantly, I hope you've all had a lovely time making some flowers. I hope you've all learned a little bit about bees and I hope you all have an amazing day today. Thank you so much once again for joining us at GSC at home. We'll be back again at 10am with some more science for you. Thank you very much.